Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, which is a greeting of peace, peace be unto you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. This week we're going to be talking about the prophets. The prophets who were sent by the creator of the heavens and earth to teach us on how to get close to God, to teach us how to live. The prophets who we needed to emulate. And today we have the last and final messenger we sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. We are going to be talking with our special friend, our guest Sheikh Yusuf Estes. We talked with him previously about the first man, the first prophet, Adam. Now, if you don't catch us live on the TV here in Chicago, all of our shows are online at thedeanshow.com. And you can go under Yusuf Estes and see the other shows that you missed. Now, without further delay, we're going to continue talking about the prophets with our special guest, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, when we come back on the Dean Show. There's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger Allah, la ilaha illallah Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah, la ilaha illallah I don't know why I did that, maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice Assalamu alaikum Wa alaikum assalamu alaikum wa Thank you for being with us again, Sheikh. It's great to be back. And is this building getting taller every time I come here? I don't know. <laughs> and when you look out and you see everything out there, it's, it's an amazing thing. MashaAllah. Thank I you. like it. And I like what the, the studio is doing, and I like the reach that you're getting out to the people. I think that's what's really important. Alhamdulillah. All thanks and praises to the Creator of the Heavens and Earth, Allah, who's given us this ability to be able to set up this Dawah program and we'd like to thank you for helping to support this Dawah program that we're doing so we can help benefit the world. I'm just wondering that on the next program when I come, are you guys going to have your own helicopter and land on that helipad up on the top? Because <laughs> you bring me on that, that'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sheikh, we talked about Adam, who was yeah. the first prophet, mm -hmm. and you talked about the story, what happened in the garden, and some of the other things, how he turned to Allah alone, he repented, and people can go and watch this episode at thedeanshow.com. By the way, I heard you mention the website, mm -hmm. and I've been telling people about your website, and they said, well, I went to deanshow.com, and I didn't find it. I said, no, no, it's thedeanshow.com, yes. T-H-E-D-E-E-N-S-H-O-W.com. Yeah. You have to put the word the yes. in front of it, right? Yes, thedeanshow.com. They can go there and catch up if they need to if they didn't catch, if they missed the other shows that we did with you. Mm -hmm. Tell us and continue talking about some of the other prophets that God Almighty Allah sent to mankind. I think it's good for us to go back and, and you know, kind of pick up where we were on the subject of special and super special that you were talking about. Yes. A, a special person to us would be one who is carrying a message, mm -hmm. an important uh, statement for the people. That message is to worship God without any partners. Mm -hmm. But in English, they will get confusing because a messenger to us, in, we'll use the word in the Bible it's used, is an epistle. A message is an epistle. And one who carries it's an apostle. Yeah. But for us, when we say the messenger of Allah, this is called super special. Let's give that message there. Yeah that he is a messenger in the sense that he is physically coming with something that you can uh, touch. Yeah. Because some of the prophets, they came and they told people to worship God, but they didn't come with a particular scripture yeah. or what's called suhuf. They did not come with that. They just came with a general idea that worship God, worship God, worship God. Don't worship rocks, sticks, stones, bones. Don't worship things you see or don't see or make up in your mind, but 
worship the only one God who created everything in the first place. Mm -hmm. This is what they all said. Now this would be for every single one of them from the beginning, which would be Adam all the way to Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon all of them. But when they come with scripture, now let, uh, this is going to be more for the folks who know about the Bible. Moses comes with the Ten Commandments. Yeah. And not because it's carved in stone, but because it is a new set of commandments for the people. They said, we didn't know about this. Okay, here it is. Mm -hmm. And then David, or Dawood as he's called in Arabic, and his son Suleiman. Yeah. They have also come with scripture called Zabur mm -hmm. or Psalms. Yeah. Jesus Christ, peace and blessings be upon him, he also came with something called the Injil or the Gospel or the Good News. Yes. So each one of these is having something there associated with them more so than just a good character about them or just that they're saying just worship God. There are many, many prophets, more than a hundred and uh, I think 124,000, more than. So tens of thousands of prophets out here. Yeah. And now we have a distinction here between them in that some are actually Rasuls yes. or Ambia that have another nomenclature and a distinction that they have this this thing of uh, here's a commandment, this is something to remember, and so on. They originally came in the form of what was taught from mouth. The prophets hear it and they teach it. Some of the prophets knew how to read and write. Mm -hmm. Now according to some old manuscripts that we have uh, from Jews, Christians, uh, some teachings of early Muslims, they believe that Adam, of course, is the first of the, all of the mankind and also the first prophet. He has a son named Seth or Shith, mm -hmm. depending on how you pronounce it. And he would be a prophet in the sense that he's telling people, you know, worship the God that our father worshipped, Adam, yes. to his offspring and so on. Uh -huh. Then after that is going to come another one, Idris. Enoch is how he's known in the Bible. Enoch. Yeah. There are some apocrypha from the Bible, in other words, hidden from the public. These are hidden things. But there is a gospel or a, uh, a, a manuscript attributed to Enoch, mm -hmm. Enoch's uh, teachings and so on. And it is also in Islam to believe that Idris or Enoch is the first man who came with scripture that was written, mm -hmm. that he was the first of all people to read and write. About this, it's mentioned in the Quran that Allah says that, that it is Allah who taught man what he didn't know, taught, taught the human being how to use a pen, and taught him what he didn't know. And it's said that this is talking about Enoch. Mm -hmm. So this would be, Enoch would be Idris, who's another prophet, mm -hmm. after Ad A prophet and a messenger. Uh -huh. and he's an Anbiya, he's a Nabi, in other words. Anbiya yeah. is the plural of Nabi. He's a Nabi, a prophet, but he's also a messenger because it was something where he had something written down, something for the people to learn about. So it means that, not only, I guess, that it means that he not only could uh, uh, read and write, but also he had to teach reading and writing to his people if they were going to be able to carry it forward. Now we talked about in our previous show when you talked about Adam mm -hmm. that he called people to surrender, submission, sincerity, obedience, obedience sincerity, and, and, and peace. Yeah. Now what was the teachings and the way of the next prophet or messenger, no prophet you said Idris. And you, how, did you, how else did you say his name? Idris? Idris or Enoch. Enoch. What way of life was he upon? The difference for all of them, they would all be saying to have the attitude, this yeah. thing that we're talking about, to recognize there's one God, this is monotheism. Yes. Then what's your relationship with him? This would be Islam. So we believe, as Muslims, that there was always the belief of at least some people believing that there is one God, the mm -hmm. God of Adam that created Adam. And that God and, and the understanding of him this is called Hanif, Hanafiya, Hanif, to believe in this. This is monotheism. Yeah. 
then when people are talking about this, they're preaching a religion of monotheism or Hanif. But when they come with some commandment, they said, okay, and in addition to believing in God and living in a subservient way to God, here's a commandment from God. You have to do this. Okay, that makes them a Rasul. That makes them a messenger. So that's how we would say that I obviously, Idris would be the first of those. If he's the first one reading and writing and passing it on, then it must be that he's the first of the Rasuls. Yeah, what, what from authentic information do we have about the life of Idris? Very little. Very little? Yeah, when I did the series for the children called Kisas mm -hmm. the stories of the prophets, uh, we couldn't even make a full program out of it because unless I really want to talk about what's known from the Apocrypha, if I want to talk about what's known from the Christians and what's known from the, the Jews about these, I'm talking about the scholars have information on that. But I didn't want to turn my program into some scholarly work about stuff that we don't even know if it's authentic anyway. But I did want to reference that there is somebody with this name and he was a prophet and he had some things. Now, what he had exactly, if you want to compare what he had to what, let us say, for instance, Abraham had, we don't have enough comparison there to make a decent uh, program out of it. But we can conclude that he worshipped God alone. He didn't worship Absolutely. a man. He didn't every worship Jesus. Single, he didn't, he... Every single prophet of Almighty God has to believe there's only one God, and they're trying their best to do his will on earth as it is in heaven. This is that, a foregone conclusion. That long sentence you just said is summed up with one word in Arabic, isn't it? Islam. Islam. Okay. Aslama is the verb. So, Islam would be. So they the, were doing Islam. They were submitting. To they were doing Aslama. Aslama. Islam. Aslama. Yes, Aslam. Okay, moving on. We went from Adam, Idris, and now the next prophet or messenger in line. Who was that? There are many, and mm -hmm. we won't know all of them. The ones that we know about. But key. Key. Yeah. He would be Abraham, peace be upon Abraham. Abraham was also in the same area as Jonah. Mm -hmm. He's in Iraq. Now, some might offer that they might think that, uh, that uh, Jonah would be older. But, uh, well, no, we did forget one, didn't we? I did. And that would be uh, uh, obviously not a prophet in the sense of being a messenger, but definitely a prophet in the sense of calling the people to worship one God would be Noah. Noah. So yeah. Idris, Noah, then, then Noah. Uh, it could, yeah, it would be, according to the genealogy mentioned in the Bible, it would be that uh, Noah comes after Enoch. Yeah. And Nuh is how it's pronounced in Arabic. Nuh, with a ha sound at the end. Nuh was one who worshiped God alone without any partners. And he finds that his people, though, they're worshiping these statues. Yeah. And how that comes about is that when there were these righteous people before and they died, then the people would tell the children, you know, you should be like them, you should be like them. They were righteous, this guy or that guy, so and so. So some of them made images or statues mm -hmm. of these people and said, he looked like this, she looked like that, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they would erect these statues and people would pass by them and they could say, well, you know, this person right here, you should be like this one. He had this good quality and that one had this good quality. So people were identifying with these statues in a way that was to uh, improve their character, their moral behavior, their, uh, their belief in God. Mm -hmm. But then another generation comes and they don't know what you're talking about with statues. They begin to worship the statue itself. Mm. And so even you find this iconic uh, uh, mindset today where people say, well, I'm not really worshiping the statue, but I represent what, uh, I, I worship what it represents mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. And so I'm not worshiping the statue, I'm worshiping the God that dwells in the statue, or I'm worshiping the God who made the statue, or I'm just worshiping God and the statue reminds me of God. But all of these things, uh, are coming from this mentality and this is what Noah came to get the people away from. Yeah. And now another thing we didn't talk about before about prophets, they mm -hmm. come with signs. Yes. Those who come with the major signs, these are major prophets. Mm -hmm. well, a major sign with Noah was of course the flood. Not because the water came up, because anybody could say, well, it was a flood. Yeah. But the fact that he predicted it in a time and a place 
where that had not occurred before. Mm -hmm. And he kept telling them it was going to happen and you need to repent, need to believe in God, need to uh, turn your lives over to him and live righteous because the people were really not very righteous at all at yeah. his time. So what happens that when he builds this ark now, the big ship out there, they're, they're dying laughing at him. Like, what are you building it here for? Screwball. You know, look at you. And then he started bringing these animals and putting them in there. Okay, this guy's whacked. And they're making fun of him, laughing, joking. His own son rejected to go with him on that. Yeah. And in those days, for sure, there was a big family ties and it would be really bizarre for you to disobey your father. But he's telling him, come get in this boat with him. No, nah, not going to do it. Now, he couldn't guide his own son. So this should tell all of us something. You can't force people to accept the beliefs. Yeah. He couldn't do it. We can't do it either. But you try your best to explain to them. And when the water started raising up, he told his son, come on, get in, get in. He said, no, I'm going to go up the mountain. He said, it's going to go up there. He said, I'll go higher up. He said, it's going to top it off. Oh, it's never going to be that high. Water doesn't it go up to the top of a mountain? Are you crazy? Well, we found out who's crazy. Mm -hmm. Because sure enough, Noah did get into the ship. He did have the animals with him. And he had, maybe he had 70 or 80 people. I don't know exactly how many. I didn't have certainly didn't have the whole village and the water came it came from above and below this could be rising water as well as rain coming down it could have been a number of things but it eventually covered everything in their area in Islam we don't have this idea that the whole entire earth had to be covered with water for so many days and nights or anything mm -hmm. but certainly the known world to him was covered yeah they had a lot of water there was a big flood and reports that we have from some of those who archaeologists have told us that there is evidence that in ancient times there was a big flood that might have been around the world. Certainly it was in different places in Europe, different places in Arabia. This is known his historically. Well, yeah, there definitely, but there's been more than one flood too. Yeah. And they might not be able to put them all at the same time, I don't know. Yeah, but if we make a contrast now between what the Bible says, the Bible says that this was a worldwide flood and then the Quran would say that it was a local flood so would this no, support the, the Quran doesn't say it doesn't try to commit to that because the yeah. subject is not about how much water was covered yeah it's about the fact that the people themselves were covered with water I see this is the point yeah so it doesn't really matter to us and we don't really care if it was all covered fine and good if it wasn't that's fine and good it doesn't matter what matters is that people didn't obey yes they had a chance, they knew he was a righteous man, he wasn't lying. And then even when the water started coming, they could have said, okay, this could be a sign, let's just get in the boat for fun, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't. Yeah. So the main thing he did was he called them to worship God and not these statues, idols, the people amongst themselves that they had yeah. li lifted up to the level of God. He called them to something that was natural, to the worship of one God. Yeah, and, and now it, this is a course of testing them in a way mm -hmm. because you want me to worship one God, fine and good, but now you're also asking me to believe in a prophecy here that water's going to come up. And mm -hmm. that would be a condition, yeah, you need to believe that. So this is, this is what happened at his time. Now later on we find that we'll go now to Abraham, and Abraham, his name is Ibrahim. This is the name. next prophet now. Yeah, and he's going to be a key prophet, a super special, if you will, because yeah. he's a Rasul, mm -hmm. in that he has actual scripture. Again, Apocrypha teaches us that Abraham had some scripture. Yeah. But in the Bible itself, no, we don't have that. But from Islam, we do know he did, because it says in Quran, in Surah At-Tariq, the end of it, it says, Suhufa Ibrahima wa Musa, mm -hmm. the scriptures of Abraham and Moses. So we know he had scriptures. Mm -hmm. So what happened and what was the unique circumstance with Abraham? You talked about Noah and his unique circumstance. What about Abraham? What was he well, battling at his time? Abraham's father, according to the Bible, is uh, Terah. And his uh, father was a statue maker. Statue maker. Yeah, he made the statues that people worshipped. Mm -hmm. Big business also, isn't it? 
Well, it was a, actually a ministerial post yeah. that he, in other words, you're not just a guy out here hustling statues on the side of the road. You're making them by the royal command of the king himself. At that time, the king was named Nimrod yeah. or Nimrud in Arabic. His name was Nimrud. And he was the one who told people that he was God, actually said that he was the Lord, you need to worship him. There's some dialogue mentioned in the Quran between Abraham and Nimrud, wherein the, the, just one example, that Abraham is telling him that you should worship God. And he's saying, well, I'm God. He said, no, uh, my God, my Lord, is the one who gives life and gives death. Now, the story has it that Nimrud brought some people forward and ordered that some be killed, and then he spared the others, and he said, those people lived and those died, so I give life and I give death. Mm. So then the response comes back, well, my Lord is the one who causes the sun to rise in the east. Why don't you make it come up in the west? No, he's stumped. Yeah, he's stumped. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's a good way to translate that. Yeah. He was stumped. And he couldn't answer that. Of course, he gets mad and some other things happen. But there's another event that took place like this, that these people were worshiping these statues. And Abraham's complaining to his father about these statues. Why were, why were you making these statues and, and you want people to believe that there's a God in them? I mean, you can make the statue have big ears or big nose or, you know, and it's up to you to tell, tell them that this is this God or that God, give it a name. And yeah. you know, what's that? Mm -hmm. His father, of course, didn't want him talking like that because, uh, look, I got a high post here, I'm a big shot, and you're messing everything up. So at one point, the people were out doing something. I don't remember this, that part of the story. but So Abraham went in their temple where all these gods, these false statues and idols were there. And he took a huge mallet, a big hammer, like a sledgehammer, and he began to beat and destroy all of these statues except the biggest of all of them. Mm -hmm. And then he leaves the hammer, the big hammer, right beside the big guy. Yeah. And then he goes away. Well, when the people return to the temple, they're amazed. So what happened? What in the world? Who could do such a thing? And somebody said, well, bring that boy who's the son of the statue maker. Bring him. He's complaining about our gods. So let's see what he has to say. They brought him and said, look at this. And he looks around, okay? I said, well, what do you say about all this? He said, why are you asking me? Mm -hmm. Why don't you ask the guy with the big hammer? Yeah. So at that stage, they're like, huh, well, that's a good answer. And then they respond back to him and said, he can't hear and he can't uh, see. Or he can't hear and he can't speak. I think yeah. that's what he said. He can't hear and he can't speak. He said, then why are you praying to him? Well, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. And I've asked people that have statues and things that they hold on to, well, why, do you, why do you think this thing can benefit you? If it fell off and broke, what would you do? They said, I'll go buy another one. What is this? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. So when he did that, though, that's when they made the big fire. One of the biggest fires that was ever in the history of humans at that time. A whole valley full of fire, I guess. And they wanted to burn him up. The king, Nimrud, ordered to burn him up. Mm -hmm. But the people trying to build the fire were, were themselves getting burned up trying to build it. Wow. They couldn't get close enough to throw him in, and they developed then and there what's called the catapult. Mm -hmm. You know the catapult? Yes. This is that long, long, long tree or bar, and you put a fulcrum here, and then you have a, a, a mm -hmm. balance there, and then poof, throw him into the fire. Well, they did. They threw him into the fire with that catapult. But when he went in, Allah said, be cool for Abraham. And they said for days and nights he was in that fire and he came out unscathed. He had nothing, no burns, nothing on him. And they didn't know what to do with him after that. They just wanted him to leave now. This was a miracle right there, wasn't it? It'd be a pretty big miracle. Yeah. Now, if we take it to modern times, he was fighting against idolatry, calling the people to worship the Creator alone, the same thing Noah did, the same thing... Idris did the same thing the first man, man Adam did and if we look at modern times today these were icons these were statues you see some of that present today don't you in a different form you see it in the exact same form 
and other variants of it. The mm -hmm. exact same form I have seen in some countries I've visited. Yeah. People have idols or statues. I recall one, he had a statue on the dashboard of his car. He was a driver. And I got in, slammed the door, and when I did, that idol wiggled like that. I said, what is this? He said, that's my God. I said, you're what? He said, that's my God for traveling. Hey, put your seatbelt on. And as I was putting my seatbelt on, I said, well, why don't you put a seatbelt on your God there? <laughs> And he started laughing. And I said, I'm not joking. I said, Look, you know, things wiggling there. You're liable to hit a bump up here and it falls down. You know, and uh, he said, no, it won't watch. And he grabbed it and he picked it up and you could hear, <coughs> he had Velcro on it. Uh -huh. I said, a God with a Velcro. And then <laughs> he, <laughs> he put it back and what he did, I said, well, what would you do if it did fall down and broke? He said, I'll go buy another one. Mm -hmm. So there's, for some people, they're not catching that what you're saying. You're worshiping, you're giving prayers and thanksgiving and requests to a piece of wood or a piece of stone for crying out loud. Why do you think people don't see the seriousness of this issue? They'll walk, you'll walk in some grocery store and you might see the icons of Mary or Jesus, they, what they claim to be Jesus, or even you can put a quarter in one of these little slot machines and something will come out of a little small statue, an icon. <laughs> you see this going on. Why do people turn to these things? Why do you think this is something that attracts people? Uh, well, Muslims even have some of their own problems too, as far as taking those little teeny, teeny Qurans. You can't even read them. Yeah. And they want to wear it as a locket or something, thinking it brings some good luck. Yeah. It's superstition. Superstition. People want something they can hang on to, to believe in, but they're not accepting that Allah Himself is the one that really is providing for you, caring for you, the one you turn to, the one you give thanksgiving to. They don't want to do that because of their various reasons. But it, this is the biggest problem of all. This is the biggest incorrect worship and incorrect belief is what destroys the society. Do you see this as just a cop out, an easy way out? That I feel like I can do whatever I want to do and then I, there's something yearning inside the human being, so he takes this. It and could he... be for some people, Eddie, but I won't say that it's true of everybody. Uh, it could be that that's the case, but mm -hmm. we can't just write it all off and say everybody's the same. Let's it bring in different reasons. Yeah, so before we conclude, tell us now what other special event happened with Abraham and something that we can take home and all benefit from? Abraham was really, I think, a, a good example for us to realize that we can't identify God on our own because he had another example that he looked to the sun, to the moon, and to the stars. Mm. And each along the way he said, could this be my God? Could this be my God? Could this be my God? But the sun sets, the stars go away, the moon at uh, uh, different phases. And he says, all of this is not my God. And the scholar said he did this for, for his people to hear him say it because he knew better. But he said that, you know, this is not my God. So I won't be guided unless he guides me. Uh, so we should ask for guidance. Absolutely. And I'd like to thank you for being with us. Great Sid. to do it. Great to thank you. It. We're going to have to continue on talking about these wonderful human beings, the prophets that we should all emulate, and the last and final messenger. But hold on. I want to give you an opportunity that if somebody wants to learn more, you have some websites that you can refer the people to. I, I suggest really that they visit our website called shareislam.com, mm -hmm. S-H-A-R-E-I-S-L-A-M.com. And on the drop-down list on the left, you can look for where it says Prophets or Muhammad and check it out. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. And a wonderful example of what Abraham did. Peace be upon him. He looked to the sun and said, that can't be my God. To the stars and to the moon, he said, that can't be my God. And he asked the one God, the creator, who created the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything in creation. He asked that God to guide him. And that's what we should all do. Ask the Creator alone to guide us. And we hope to see you again next time here on The Dean Show. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum. Peace be unto you.
The DVDs for Dawah, as Allah has said in the Quran in Surah Nahu 1625, invite all to the way of your Lord with wisdom beautiful preaching and reason with them in ways that are best and this is a great opportunity for you to take up the obligation take up the call as Allah has told you to do and share this beautiful message with the world Islam submission to the one God come and see what everyone's talking about if you find one contradiction it can't be from God but the rational idea the rational explanation is you do your best. Give up for spring God as well. I will never give up spreading this message. We hope that you take that necessary step. You don't know if you're going to live till tomorrow. So you got to find that urgency to do the right thing right now. If you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of this land. You cannot be a Muslim. It has attended our faith to. It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me. Oh Allah, you see, oh Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart. I'm your sinful slave, you're my loving Lord, I'm the one who runs away, oh Allah guide me.